AITA for telling my son he needs to live with the consequences of ignoring what his children were saying. My son lost his first wife when their two children were preschoolers. My grandson is now 17 and my granddaughter is almost 16. Their relationship with my son has been on a downward spiral for years. It started when he and his current wife moved in together. She had two kids of her own and early on they showed extreme jealousy whenever their mom would pay any attention or buy anything for my grandkids. They were older, teenagers, and said a number of cruel things to my grandkids. My grandkids told my son. They told my wife and I, and we spoke to our son. But he ignored all four of us. My wife also spoke to my son's second wife, prior to the wedding, and she said her kids would adjust in time. My grandkids spent years living with two much older kids, who told them that they deserved to have a dead mom and that she wanted to die because no one would ever want to be around them. They accused them of stealing because their mom shouldn't be buying them anything anyway. There were instances where they broke stuff their mom bought my grandkids. My wife and I pleaded with our son to do something, to help his kids. We said they didn't deserve to be raised like that. The problem continued even after the older kids moved out. They still expressed a lot of jealousy and hatred for my grandkids. I never interacted with my son's stepkids. I saw them a handful of times in the years my son has been married to his current wife. They would mostly go to their dad if my son and his wife were spending time with us or any of our kids. Or they would reject offers to spend time with us. But the few times I did see them, I was always shocked by how blatant their hatred for my grandkids was and how my son never appeared to care. One incident in particular stands out. It was my granddaughter's birthday and she got an art kit she had wanted. It set the two older kids off and they called her a baby and then they even broke apart her kit. My wife and I spoke to our son and his wife, but they did nothing and said nothing. My grandkids now spend a lot of time with myself and my wife. They barely speak to their dad despite living under his roof. They wanted us to get custody of them, but we were denied. So they have taken to doing their best to make it through the next year or two. My son is now only starting to care about the relationship with his kids that he has destroyed. He asked me why do we try to fight for custody of our kids when he's their dad, and he accused my wife and I of turning the kids against him. This is when I stopped him, and I said we didn't turn them against him. He's just living with the consequences of ignoring what his kids were telling him. I told him he put them through years of bullying so he could marry and stay married, and now he's living with his decision. My son ranted at me and said the last thing any parent should do is try to make their kid feel shitty about themselves, which is what I was doing. AITA? AITA for bluntly telling someone why their disabled son isn't allowed my muscle car. I, 26 male, work full time as a driving instructor. Due to the location of my school, the bulk of the people I work with are from the rehab center next door. This has sadly led me to my current situation with my aunt over her disabled son, 14 male, who attends a day program they host. It started a month ago when I picked up a Mustang I pre-ordered through her dealership. Upon seeing this, she then began to ask if I could take her son out for a ride. No matter how many times I would tell her no, she just refused to accept it and would try to guilt trip me. Things peaked this week when I bluntly told her that I work 50 hours a week and don't have time for her shit. When she kept pushing things, I snapped and told her that her son is the last person I want near my car. I then went on to tell her the reasons why. He would never be allowed to ride in my car. The reasons are that he can't control his bladder slash bowels and that his stimming may break things. When I told her this, it only made things worse, as she only got more upset and pushy with me. I wound up having no choice but to cut contact with her. However, it only made things worse. I now have several other family members from her side coming after me over this. I do not believe that I'm the asshole here. However, I would like an outside opinion. AITA? AITA for acting superior at my middle school reunion. I'm 23 female. In middle school, I was excluded and treated really harshly by my fellow classmates. I lived in a predominantly Asian area and am Asian myself, but I was never seen as Asian enough by most of my other peers because I was chubby and didn't do well in school, neurodivergent. They would constantly be passive aggressive to me and act like I was a pest whenever I was trying to be genuinely nice. So I started resenting them and hanging out with people who actually accepted me. Today, I changed a lot. I lost tons of weight after high school and I made friends with a photographer who helped me to get a startup in modeling. 
I'm nowhere near as successful as Naomi Campbell, but I do high fashion editorial modeling. I'm proud of my position, and I'm aware that I'm very fortunate to be in the position that I'm in today. Yesterday night was my middle school reunion. I have a good group of friends I've known since middle school, so we all went there together. Whenever we arrived, I felt very uncomfortable, and only spoke to my group, or the people who didn't treat me like crap. Whenever one of the people, who used to act towards me, tried to speak to me, I'd just ignore them, continuing to talk and not look at them at all. I didn't see any issue. They did the same thing to me, but apparently, it irritated one of the dudes. This one in particular posted my low test score to humiliate me in middle school. He came up to me and was trying to talk to me, but I just ignored him. He started telling me I thought I was better than everyone else, and I was acting like a stuck-up prick. I replied that I am better than everyone else, and that's why I have a more successful career. We then had some back and forth, because I mentioned that he treated me like crap, so he couldn't act entitled to my time and respect. At that point, my friends told me we should just leave. I personally feel you dish out what you get. They all did the same stuff to me in middle school. My friends were all on my side, but some of them felt like I could have tried to be nicer to make peace. AITA? AITA for giving my late husband's estate to a stranger instead of our kids. I, female 55, have been married to my husband, male 60, for 20 years before he died of cancer. He has two kids from his past marriage, who were in their early teens when he married me. I have a 7 year old from an earlier relationship as well. We didn't have any more kids. I tried to treat my stepchildren as my own, but they never accepted me. They were very rude and insulted me whenever they could. Since I did not work, they called me a gold digger who married their dad only for his money. The truth was my grandparents were very wealthy and left me off with a lot of money when they died. I lived well below my means and chose to stay at home and raise my daughter, since I could afford that. I did not need his money at all, but I didn't bother sharing this with his kids and told him not to either. I did not want them to like me just because they might gain monetarily from me. My husband, on the other hand, hated how they behaved towards me. Their blatant disrespect made him not pay for their college tuition. Their mom couldn't pay for it and they had to take out loans. They didn't even talk to him. Even when he got cancer, they refused to come see him. For three years, we struggled with his treatment. My daughter came to visit from time to time when she could. During this time, the only one who really helped us was someone who was not related to us at all. This girl in her late 20s waitressed at a cafe we frequented. She was a single mom, taking classes at community college at night, working during the day and raising her two kids. She took a liking to us and she learned that my husband was sick. She spent whatever time she could visiting us. She had stayed nights at the hospital when I needed a break and basically was the daughter we always wished for. She helped me arrange the funeral. His kids came on that day and all they wanted to know was about his inheritance. I felt sick. When I learned my husband had left me his estate, whatever is left after settling the bills, it was around 250000 I decided to give it to the girl who helped us both so much. She tried to refuse it, but I insisted she take it. She needed it and in my opinion deserved it more than the ungrateful children. My daughter understood why I did not give it to his children, but is upset I did not give anything to her. I told her she already had money and a job, not to mention she'll get my inheritance. This was no way her money. But his ex and kids are causing havoc over this, and they're really upset with me. They're calling me an asshole for giving away money they deserved. AITA? AITA for ending a family naming tradition by not giving my son my late nephew's name as his middle name even though my sister has said she wants me to. My family has always had this tradition where the first child born after a loss of someone in the family gets the late family member's name as their middle name. My sister and I both have those middle names. Her is Patricia after a cousin of our mom's and mine is Denise after my dad's aunt. Almost a year goes by and my sister lost her two-year-old son, Philip. He was the last family member we lost, and it was huge, earth-shattering blow for our family. I found out I was pregnant a few months ago. I waited to tell anyone, and my sister was the first person we told, privately. When I told her, she said it would be nice to have some positive news to focus on, and she wanted me to continue the tradition of our family's names, and give my baby, if a boy, the middle name Philip. She was so happy about the idea. It surprised me a lot. I would have figured she would not be okay with it, but she wanted it. The problem is, my husband and I do not want to continue this tradition. We do not want to give our son the middle name Philip. The name isn't one either of us would like, or would ever pick ourselves. We have not announced the sex of our baby, but my husband and I know we're expecting a boy. My family was saying how amazing it would be if the baby is a boy, and Philip's name can be carried on. 
I suggested they wait till we announced the sex and the name before jumping to conclusions. They asked why, and I said we were thinking of not continuing the tradition. My family, and by that means my parents mostly, were very upset. My sister was worse though. She asked why I didn't want to honor Philip, and why it was him the tradition was getting broken on. She asked if I saw him as meaning so little, and I said no, of course not. Then she asked if it was his name, and if we didn't like it. She said she really hoped that wasn't it. I said we just didn't feel like the tradition was something we wanted to continue. The decision has brought up a lot of feelings, and my sister is especially feeling hurt and angry, and thinks I'm being insensitive and in showing how little I care for my nephew. I feel terrible. She's so angry at me, and my parents are unhappy as well. My husband hates them for putting this pressure on us. He said we should be allowed to name our son whatever we want, and we should not be obliged to a certain name. I never wanted to be the asshole, but my family believes I am. AITA? Despite what Reddit seems to come to the conclusion to, I do think you're that asshole. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. The middle name's not used by anybody, really. Um, it's very inconsequential to the child's existence. Hell, uh, my middle name is Michael, and I think there's like 10 people in my entire life who know what my middle name is. Uh... And it's not because I'm embarrassed about it. It's just no, no one knows. No one uses it, you know? AITA for telling my friend her baby is the reason no one wants to hang around her. One of my, female 24, friends, Anna, female 24, has a baby around six months back. Our friend group is otherwise childless. All of us used to hang out a lot before the child was born. The baby changed the dynamics because Anna wanted to bring the baby everywhere. And it's a baby. We tried to plan things around the baby to include Anna, but it always ended up badly. We couldn't drink because Anna couldn't drink. We shouldn't be loud because, well, a baby needs to sleep. Icing on the cake is her baby is extremely fussy and cries all the time. It was just a downer for the rest of us, so we started hanging out without Anna and her baby. Last week, all of us went on a staycation. We had a great time and posted photos and videos on Instagram. Anna saw these and called me out to ask why. Why did I not ask her to come with us? I tried telling her it was a last minute plan and we could only find a child free resort so as not to hurt her feelings. She called my bluff and sent me pictures of a random family who had posted their kids at the resort. She kept forcing me and I told her that we did not want to hang out with her baby. She asked me how I can say that about her baby. I asked her to leave it at that but she didn't. I finally told her that it's a baby and we're all young. We don't want to live our life around a baby she chose to have that we got to do adult stuff and party all we wanted. Her baby is the only reason why she wasn't invited. If she left the baby at home, she can come too. She got pissed off and called me an asshole. She also sent a text in the group chat saying she is disappointed in all of us for excluding her because she's a mom. Half of our friend group thinks I should not have told her the real reason and is mad at me. Other half thinks she's being unreasonable. AITA for telling her the truth? For the comments. We try to communicate to her about only adult events other than openly saying, don't come if you bring your baby. She refuses to leave her baby with her boyfriend or babysitter, even when we say an event is adults only, like a dinner we had a few weeks ago. She still brought her baby. Baby cried throughout the night, earning us glares, and we had to leave early. AITA for telling my daughter she's a disappointment. I have two daughters, 23 female and 20 female. They are both so beautiful and smart, and I really love them both. I have always wanted them to be strong and independent women who could stand on their own feet, and I try to raise them that way. They were both interested in volleyball, and I always supported their interest. My youngest is still playing in a team, and is also studying at a good university. She is really hard working, and if she does not succeed in playing professional volleyball, she will definitely get a good job. My older daughter quit both sports and school when she got pregnant at the age of 18. When she first told us she was pregnant, I was very upset and advised her to have an abortion because having a child at such a young age would disrupt her life. She did not want to have an abortion, and my wife supported her decision. To be honest, I was very insistent on her having an abortion at the time. But when I saw she remained determined, I dropped the issue and supported her fully, even though I didn't want to. She got married quickly with the baby's father. Then she decided to stay at home and take care of her child, and her husband started to work. I never wanted my daughter to be financially dependent on her husband, but I never voiced it either. But of course, my daughter knows that I'm bothered by this. Yesterday, we were having a dinner with my daughters and my wife. My wife and daughter started talking about being a mother. 
My wife told her that even though I wanted to have an abortion, I loved my grandson so very much. My daughter asked me if that was so, and I said, of course I love him. But my daughter knew I was bothered by her situation, so it didn't sound sincere at all. My daughter said I could give her an honest answer. I told her I really do love my grandson, but I was disappointed that she became a mother at such an early age. Had left school and her job and was now dependent on a man. She didn't argue with me, but the rest of the night was a bit tense. At the end of the night, she went home and my wife started a fight over what I said. I told her that she was the one who wanted an honest answer, but my wife is sure that I'm an asshole. My younger one agrees with me, but says I was rude to say it out loud. Edit. I'm not sorry that my daughter doesn't live the life that I want. I'm sorry that she lives dependent on another person, and I can't say that their marriage is going very well. They chose the sport they wanted to be interested in, the university they wanted to go to, or the hobbies, etc. I didn't force anything on them. All I want is for them to be self-sufficient. I also told my daughter that I would pay for a babysitter if she wanted to go back to school or get a job. Yes, she is only 23 years old and could still have a career, but she's not doing that. Since yesterday, I have received many comments about what a good father I am and what a terrible father I am. It's okay. In the second edit I posted in the comments, I said I wanted to apologize to my daughter, which I did. It was a very long conversation, but I don't have the time today, so I can't go into detail. Also, no matter how much I go into detail, some people here are going to be very interested in making things up, so it'll be a wasted effort anyway. In short, I apologized and explained to her that I'm worried more than disappointed. Thankfully, she understood. I reminded her that I love her and that I will always be there for her. Also, my suspicions about their marriage turned out to be correct. They don't have a good marriage. Her husband has suggested therapy, but she doubts it'll work. This time, I didn't tell her what to do. I told her that I would support her in whatever she does. I told her that if she wants to go back to school or work, my offer of babysitting still stands. And if she wants more from me, I will always do it. So there, I'm still the best father ever.